Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we started talking about is the relationship of multiplication and division. So as you can see here, if, I'm, if I have 12 and I break it into three parts, how many parts do I now need to make to wind up with 12 again? Well, the answer is three. And why is that true? Well, if I'm starting with 12, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's see if that shows up. Do, do, do. Let's see. There they are. So there's my 12. So if I'm starting with 12, and I divide it into three parts, which means I'm going to have four in each, right? So one, two, three, four. So here's my first part. Two, three, four. Here's my second part. One, two, three, four. There's my third part. So if I break it into three parts, each one is worth four. Now take that four. Right? There's my four. And multiply that by three, which means I want three groups of that. There's another one. There's my third one. One, two, three, one, two, three. I wind up with 12, right back where I started. Okay? And so that's, that's basically the deal. So with variables, with regard to variables, if I'm starting with f, and I make h groups of those, and then I split that by, by h, that same amount, do I wind up with f again? And the answer is yes. So what does that look like? Well, let's use these same values from the earlier problem. Let's take 12, and this time I'm going to multiply it by 3 first, and then divide it by 3. The question is, do I wind up with 12? And the answer is yes, but let's see. I'm going to make this whole thing worth 12 like this, okay? Instead of drawing all those little buggers in there. I'm going to take 12, and I'm going to make three groups of that. So here's another one. Here's another 12. All right. Here's another one. Here's another 12. So there's my, there's my 12 right now. So if I draw the whole thing over, one nice big block... 12, 24, 36, I have 36. Now, if I split that into three parts, there's one, there's two. Guess what? Each one is worth 12 again. There it is. There's my 12, right back where I started. Okay? So, down below, they were asking you now to draw those examples. Now, this one I already did. So, let's take a look at this guy here. Let's start with four. Here's my four. One, two, three. I'll draw them all in. Why not? Here's my four. One, two, three, four. I need five sets of that. So here's two, three, four, five. So I multiplied that by five. So I have one, two, three, four, five sets of four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. So in total, I now have 20. Okay? Now I need to take that 20. Right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I need to split that into five groups, right? Divide by five, which means uh, there are going to be four in each. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my fifth group. Okay? And guess what? I wind up with a group of four, right back where I started. Okay? It's a nice little identity here. If I'm going to multiply, take a value, multiply it by some value, and then divide it by that same value, I'm going to end up right where I started. And uh, that's what's called an identity, which means the value doesn't change with what you, what you started is the same as how you finish. Okay? That's all, folks. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.